Top five losers of the Vikings lost to the Raiders in preseason one. All right, welcome back to One Bar and Lopagus Show. I'm One Bar with Lopagus. You know, it's probably not fair to call losers in a preseason game, but, you know, just wouldn't be fun if we didn't do it. So we're going to list our top five losers the Vikings preseason game one. Speaking of losers, don't be a loser. Subscribe to the channel. Like the vids. We are closing in on 7,400 subscribers. Cannot wait to get there as we climb toward that beloved 8K, that wanted 8K desired yes and desired. in the comments as always let us hear who your biggest losers were uh and we'd love to hear them so let's do this let's just dive right into it well and you said it you know right at the bat these guys aren't losers it's the first preseason game i mean for god's sakes we're not going to put too much stock into this positive or negative but we're still going to do it anyway uh i'm gonna start with the guy who i'm gonna call him just a loser from this game because I was expecting so much more. Alexander Madison, a running back. Of all the guys who carried the rock today, he was the least impressive. Uh, many times where I thought he just he went the wrong way, which has kind of been the story of, of Alexander Madison not sensing the holes, not seeing the holes, not having the vision that some other backs do. I felt like he left a lot of yards on the table tonight. Uh, again, whatever. It's the first preseason game. I'm not going to put a whole bunch into this. But of all the backs, Alexander Madison was definitely the, the least impressive. He said many times he had three carries tonight, so uh, we got to give him a little slack here. So he had three carries for eight yards, and I think the reason he ends up on this list is just because how good the other running backs did look. I think our hopes are a little too high for old Alex, and the fact that he's even on this list shows that we're being very, very big sticklers. So Alexander Madison, three carries, eight yards, and uh, we know he's still a very good running back. Absolutely. I still trust him to be the backup to Delvin Cook. No doubt. I mean, this game isn't going to change anything with that. But again, you look at some of these replays, you're like, God, why didn't he just here? I mean, it's wide open. Didn't wanna. Whatever. That's didn't even want to be out there. You know what? In his mind, maybe he's thinking, <laughs> I'm too good to be out here. I should not be out maybe. here. This isn't, maybe he's got a point. Maybe he was right. Maybe we should all listen to Alexander Madison. All right. Who you got next? Uh, let's go on the defensive side of the ball. Let's go with the guy that I predicted that would have a breakout game, a game that everybody would be feeling very, very happy, the fact that we drafted him fairly early last year, and that is Chaz Surratt. Chaz Surratt just uh, missed tackle, missed tackle, missed tackle, and at times looked like he didn't know where he should be. Um, yeah. Wasn't great. Uh, he had a lot of playing time tonight, which I like to see, but unfortunately a lot of that playing time he looked not great. Well, and what really chapped my ass about Chaz Surratt was the lack of effort. Uh, you see him come in, miss a so tackle, confused. instead of, like, chasing the guy down, he just goes back and he looks at him and stands there. And Chaz Surratt, you're, like, battling for, like, the fifth linebacker on this team. You need to make those plays, chase those guys down, show effort, show determination, show you want it. Standing there, turning around, watching someone run past you, not a good look for you, Chaz Surratt, not at all. Well, let's remember this guy was a quarterback in North Carolina for the first couple. I mean, he's still baby fresh, and the hope when we drafted him, I'm sure, was just based off of potential. So he's got a long ways to go. The question is, will the Vikings stick with him to see if that potential comes to fruition? Who do you got next? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about Chaz. A uh, guy I do know about, like I've made my opinion, my decision on this guy is absolutely 100% clear. It's, it's uh, Dan Chasina. And, uh, yeah, he did catch a pass for 22 yards, but I don't care about Dan Justine, the receiver. I care about Dan Justine, the special teamer. The reason we kept him a couple years ago, I mean, it was last year. I don't remember. Was. Again, he flies down the field great. First one there, he misses the tackle. We saw it again today. He did it so many times last year. I can't even count. I saw him do it three times in one play last year. But, again, you see it. The guy gets there. He just can't make the play. Why keep this gunner if he can't do his job? Well, let's be clear. They're not going to keep him. Um, their receivers are too damn too damn fruitful to keep a guy like Dan Chasina. If he could make those plays, I think he would definitely be in the running. But he just did it again, like you said, the same damn thing. He's, he's fast. Nobody's questioning that. He can get there. He just can't make the tackle. And damn it, he did the exact same thing we've seen time and time again. So Dan, just like you said, I believe you said it before, is Dan Chasina later. It's not just saying yeah. Dan Chasina. Yeah. Bye-bye, Dan. Not interested, as our good friend Joel once said to a lovely lady. 
on a Saturday night. Speaking of Dan Chisina, that was Friday night. Uh, speaking of Dan Chisina, it is Sean Mannion. Sean Mannion. I mean, Kellen Mond comes in, has a has a very good game. Nobody was really expecting a very good game out of any of her backup quarterbacks. Kellen Mond has a good game. Hopefully he can back that up. But Sean Mannion is still the Sean Mannion of old. Dinkin and Duncan, looking gross. Uh, just gross throws, gross, just everything about him. Screen his helmet off. It was gross. Gross tan line. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I'm just talking about the play on the field. Nothing about him screams that he should be on an NFL roster. But it was also nothing we, that we haven't seen before. It wasn't like he was horrible. Yeah. I mean, it was. It was just. It was what he horrible. is. He doesn't make good throws. He doesn't make good plays. He can't throw the ball down the field. It's checked down here. Uh, he throws it straight in the dirt. Takes uh, sacks. He just, he, yeah, he just there's no mobility there. It's Sean Manning. We saw a classic Sean Manning performance that should only just reiterate to the coaching staff. Sean Manning is who he is. This is what he is. I mean, he didn't do anything wrong. He just showed that I am Sean Manning. Take my tan lines or leave them. This is what you're going to get. And well, the it's wor- shit. The worst part is, is this coaching staff, the new regime, re-signed him. He wasn't already here. They re-signed him. So I don't know what it is about Sean Manning. There's intrigue somewhere, somehow, maybe in the room, quarterback room. He is the smartest, most intelligent guy ever. You just can't put it together on the field. But he was 8 for 12, 79 yards, two sacks. Yuck. Let's move on. I don't yeah. want to talk about Sean Man anymore. Our fifth and final, who do you got? It's, it's Josh Metellus, the safety. Um, again, you know, the play with Josh Metellus really sticks with me. It's, it's third and 24. The, the Raiders just muff a, a shotgun snap. Muff? Yeah, it was it was disgusting. It went over the, the quarterback's head, and then the next play, Josh Metellus blows the coverage, and he allows them 22 yards. And he's pretty much pointing at himself when this happens. I mean, you know it's going to be blown, and and it you can't let that kind of stuff happen. And it's a preseason, yes, I know, whatever. But still, when it's third and 24, I don't care if it's the fifth stringers out there. You don't want to see a team able to convert that on fourth and two of the next play. Yeah, Mattelis had a few bad plays, and and a team that's probably banking on keeping three safeties. You need to be out there, lickety split, looking real good on every every damn play. And and I hate to say it because he's on an NFL roster, but there's probably fifty Josh Mattelises out there that could be picked up as a free agent. So, Josh Mattelis, love you, but you uh, you did not have a good game. Yeah, I mean he probably still has some special teams value, but as a safety, I. I don't want to see him out there. Maybe he needs to convert to a, a linebacker. Or, maybe or him maybe, and Chaz uh, Roch and switch <laughs> positions. Maybe, uh, maybe. I don't know if it'd be any better or not. But yeah, that's a good. That's a good idea. Let's 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 email the Vikings right now. You know what? I'm on this. I'm on this. Let us know who your losers were. Again, be gentle. Uh, we we don't mean to be too harsh on this, but damn it, we're gonna do one of these for every preseason game. And be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit up Lift Bridge at your local liquor store. <laughs> And remember this, I think this fact maybe came from our good friend Ellis Gregor. Uh, despite not having our top 40 hit after Mbop, Hansen has produced 10 studio albums, 4 live albums, and is still together with all original members to this day.